So she asked Wendy if she could just go and look for her mother. And Wendy thought about it for a second and then decided that it would be safe and she allowed Catrice to go and look for her mother. This was the last time Catrice Lee was ever seen again. Hello and welcome back to a new video. My name is Mara and welcome to my channel Mara Kuya. In case you haven't done so already, I bet you already know the intro. In case you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, share and especially, especially subscribe to my channel for more future content like this. Also, don't forget to turn on the little notification bell so that you won't miss out on any future videos and also on potential future updates on cases I have covered so far. That being said, I would suggest to start, as always, right with today's case. Today we are sadly again talking about a very serious topic because we are talking about the disappearance of a two-year-old toddler girl called Catrice Lee. Catrice Lee disappeared exactly on her second birthday which makes this case even more heartbreaking. I think it's important to cover this case, although it's a rather old case. Catrice Lee disappeared in the 1980s, in the early 1980s. And I think it's still important to talk about this case because as you will see as we continue with the video, there is also an age progression photo of Catrice Lee available. And in case someone of you has seen a woman similar to the woman I'll show you later on in the video um, on the age progression photo or in case any one of you has information on the whereabouts of Catrice Lee then please don't hesitate and contact police either British police or German police you will find contact information in the description box down below or maybe also in the comment section down below make sure to check it both but you will definitely find a uh, So that being said, let's start in the year 1979, because this is when Catrice Lee was born on November 28th. She was born at a British military hospital in uh, Rinteln, which uh, is a German town. And the Lee family, in fact, only moved to Germany shortly before Catrice Lee uh, was born. The reason why the Lee family even moved to Germany in the first place was because the father, Richard Lee, was a sergeant major. Uh, so he was a British soldier and he was uh, stationed. He had to spend some time in Germany as a British sol soldier. Today we are talking about um, the family members, Richard Lee and Sharon Lee, which were the parents of little Catrice, and also her sister, her older sister Natasha, who was seven years old at the time Catrice Lee disappeared. We are also talking about Catrice Lee's uncle Cliff and her aunt Wendy. We are talking about the day of Catrice Lee's second birthday, which was on November 28th. 1981. For Catrice's birthday party, the family still needed some groceries and this is why they decided to go grocery shopping at a nearby armed forces shopping complex near Paderborn, which was called uh, the Nafi um, store or Nafi shop. And this Nafi shop, I hope I pronounced it correctly, was um, for British soldiers or people who came from Great Britain but had to uh, work for the army and were thus stationed in Germany. So it was kind of a more exclusive uh, store, but it was said that also people who came from Paderborn and had basically nothing to do with the British army whatsoever also went shopping there because seemingly the prices were a little bit lower and so people and so people definitely were motivated to go and do their grocery shopping there. So it was not that exclusive in reality as it was planned to be in theory. Catrice's older sister Natasha, who was again seven years old at the time, did not want to join the family to go grocery shopping. And thus she decided to stay at home together with her uncle in order to prepare some other things for the planned birthday party. Yeah. The father, Richard Lee, waited in the car 
And so the aunt of Catrice Lee, Wendy, as well as her mother Sharon and Catrice went inside the snuffy store in order to do their grocery shopping for the planned birthday party. Then they were on the way to the register, to the cash register in order to pay for their groceries. But this was the time when Sharon found out that they completely forgot to buy some crisps. So she told Wendy that she should uh, take care of little Catrice for a moment and she would just go along the aisle and pick up some crisps and come back uh, several seconds later. And this was also what Wendy did. She waited there together with little Catrice who was again two years old and Catrice then wanted to look for her mother because she um, well she just wanted to be with her mother as it is neutral for children that age and so she asked Wendy if she could just go and look for her mother and Wendy thought about it for a second and then decided that it would be safe and she allowed Catrice to go and look for her mother Wendy. This was the last time Catrice Lee was ever seen again. She ran down the aisle in order to look for her mother and as Wendy returned with the crisps in her hand and asked her her sister Wendy where Catrice was and Wendy told her that Catrice wanted to look for her and if she hadn't seen her this was when the two women started to panic but first of all they thought well maybe she just went down the wrong aisle it was not a huge shopping complex so it was quite a small store and first of all they just um, took their stuff and well looked for the baby girl and as they did not find her nowhere in this relatively small space, in this relatively small shopping area, then they started to panic and they decided that Catrice Lee disappeared and that she was no longer anywhere to be found in, in the store. So they alarmed Richard, who was still waiting outside in the car, and told him what happened. The staff at the nephew store was also informed and also police got involved. Richard drove home because they asked him to get a photo of Catrice, uh, which totally makes sense. And back then there were no smartphones around, so he had no photo of his little baby girl with him. And he had to drive home to pick up a photo of little Catrice. Of course, Richard was panicking as well. And this is also how Natasha, seven-year-old Natasha, and Cliff, the uncle of Catrice Lee, found out that something must have been wrong. And then he told them the news that Catrice went missing. And of course, Natasha, who was the older sister of Catrice, and they had a really close bond. She panicked as well, and she asked him if she could come with him in order to search for Catrice. So now the family was back at the nephew store, and they brought back the photo of little Catrice. But this was also when everyone was completely sure that Catrice was nowhere to be found around the area because they, they looked everywhere in the Nephi store and they also looked at the parking space around the Nephi store but Catrice was nowhere to be found. And I personally wonder how would it be possible for a little two-year-old toddler, again she turned two this day, so she was a really really small child, how would it be possible for such a young child to just run out of a store of a shopping complex run across the parking space and then disappear into thin air so this makes absolutely no sense but soon authorities started to well go for the theory that it might be possible that Catrice Leach is drowned in the nearby riv river Lippe and they also searched the area around the river Lippe but Catrice was nowhere to be found there as well. And the problem is that Catrice Lee, even at the young age of two years old only, was extremely scared of water. So, or maybe not extremely scared, but she absolutely disliked water and she was kind of scared of it. So it was really, really unlikely that this two-year-old girl would just walk out of this shopping complex in order to walk straight to the River Lippe and drown there. An accidental drowning for the family of Catrice was absolutely no option whatsoever. In total, it took about two days for border police to get informed of the disappearance of the two-year-old girl. And it also took about 24 hours, so an entire day, for sniffer dogs to be brought into the Nuffy store in order to pick up the scent or potentially pick up the scent of little Catrice and they also try to get eyewitness statements and this is also when a postman came forward and told investigators that he found a little girl which was walking 
down the street basically and he brought this little girl to, pol to the police station and he thought that it might be possible that this little girl might have been Catrice Lee. Later, investigators would find out that it was a completely different girl and this girl who was walking down the street and who seemingly lost her family or her mother or whatever had nothing to do with the disappearance of Catrice Lee. Witnesses also came forward and claimed that they have seen an unknown man who was in the presence of a little girl who seemingly had uh, some similarities with Catrice Lee. And they claim that they have seen this man on uh, different occasions but then the sightings stopped. After investigators were unable to find any new leads in the case or better say the disappearance of little Catrice Lee, the case was closed and later in the year 2000 was reopened and then closed again by investigators. In the year 2012 however the case got reopened again and new leads were followed. Because in 2012, an age progression picture of Catrice was available. And this age progression photo showed Catrice around the age of 38 years old, so as a grown woman. And this picture was originally shown on the BBC Crime Watch program. Around five years later, in February 2017, um, investigators of the Royal Military Police released a photo fit of a man who was seemingly seen at the Nafi store or around the Nafi store area the day uh, Catrice Lee disappeared. And this man was said to be seen carrying a small child which might have been a little Catrice, we don't know for sure, but he was seen carrying a little child and he seemingly put this child into a green saloon car. And interestingly enough, the following day a green saloon car was seen again. This time it was seen at the River Alm Bridge, which was also near the Nephi store. The following year, in April 2018, um, there was a five-week excavation done beside the River Lippe. But again, Catrice Lee was nowhere to be found. The father, Richard Lee, is still sure up to this day that Catrice Lee never had an accidental drowning and well, that the reason why she disappeared was definitely not an accident. Rather recently, there was an arrest done in Sw Swinton, in the Swinton area, I hope I pronounced it correctly, which is in Great Britain. And this arrest was made towards a former serviceman. And there is also a property search done, but also in connection with the disappearance of Catrice Lee, but sadly they did not find any new leads in the case. Thus, they also had to release their suspect. But there is also another suspect. And a lot of people go for the theory that this suspect I will introduce to you now may have been involved in the disappearance of Catrice Lee. And this is also what I think might be the most likely theory. Because now we are going to talk about the British serial killer Robert Black. Robert Black worked for a poster company at the time of the disappearance of Catrice Lee. So it is said that it is more than likely that he had been in the area of Paderborn or may have crossed the area of Paderborn on November 28, 1981. And he was probably in Germany to put posters out for alcohol and cigarette firms. He is also said to have visited British army camps along the Rhine including the region around Paderborn. And interestingly enough, Paderborn was on his delivery route of the German Highway 33. So it is more than likely that he might have been in the area the around the time Catrice Lee disappeared. Robert Black is also the prime suspect in the brutal murder of 10-year-old Silke Garben in Detmond, which is only about 20 miles away from the place Catrice Lee disappeared from in 1985. And he is also the prime suspect of the murder case of R Ramona Herling, who was a 14-year-old German girl and she disappeared around 14 miles away from the place Catrice Lee would also disappear from. And this was around eight years prior to Catrice Lee's disappearance. So it's more than reasonable to believe that this serial killer may have been also involved in the disappearance of Catrice Lee. Robert Black died in the year 2016 due to a heart attack and we may never know if he actually was involved in the disappearance of the little toddler and thus we may also never find out what actually happened to little Catrice Lee. 
I personally think that this case is so, so heartbreaking. And what makes it even more heartbreaking is to think of the family members who still up to this day do not have closure on the whereabouts of their little girl. Catrice Lee was only two years old and she disappeared on her second birthday. And she definitely, and her family as well, they definitely deserve to get justice for what happened to her. Because I absolutely do not believe that Catrice Lee was just had an accidental drowning. And yeah, I definitely believe that foul play was involved. Again, in case you know anything about the whereabouts of Catrice Lee, or you think you may know anything about the involvement of whoever, then please don't hesitate to contact authorities, either British or German police. You will find contact information in the description box or in the comment section down below, so make sure to check out both. This is basically everything I can tell you about the disappearance case of Catrice Lee. And I know this will probably be the shortest video I've put out so far, because it's a rather old case and there's just not that much information available sadly. So I'm really sorry that I can not tell you any more details about the case and all I can say is that I really hope that this case will get solved soon. I also hope to see you next time. Bye guys!